Hey everybody, it's uh, Thursday, March 20th, 2008, and we're finally re starting to recover from South by Southwest here in Austin. And uh, we just pumped out about 100 uh, videos to the, to the net, and now we're uh, back to reality where, where every day isn't a party, and you go to town and go to five parties and, and ten conferences and all that. So we're back uh, on the web here doing interviews, and we've got Darren kitchen here. He's, he's uh, with hack5.org. He's a systems admin and he's a video blogger. And we're going to talk to him today about Hack5 and video blogging and what he does and all that. So Darren, introduce yourself if you would. Oh, hello internet. I'm, uh, I'm Darren Kitchen, like you said. You know, I'm video blogger, much like yourself. I've been uh, doing this since uh, 2005 and having a lot of fun with it. So... And uh, yeah, like you said, I'm a systems administrator by trade. So, hooray! Yeah, I I'm, I used to be a systems administrator. I I was a uh, Solaris systems admin and a Linux systems admin and a Windows system admin. So I know yeah, what I'm kind of like. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck on the Windows side at the moment. So my only fun, you know, Linux stuff happens at home. So let's look at Hack 5. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. I'm looking at your website. It says, Trust Your Techno Lust at the top. And you should. And it's got a bunch of episodes. What kind of episodes are these? Well, they're really uh, long format, kind of like video magazine-ish stuff. It's really uh, just a whole mash of, of uh, different kinds of content. So we really say it's kind of a... Um, a variety show for geeks, right? So we'll cover some stuff that's like physical modding stuff. We'll cover some stuff that's uh, you know hackery. We'll cover some systems administration type stuff, uh, tips here and there, all sorts of uh, things for for different types of geeks. And uh, we chose the long format because we really feel that you know that that's what works most with us. So um, you know it's a it's a big cast. It's a long show, typically 45 minutes to an hour, and it comes out uh, on the fifth of every month. Now I'm looking at an episode. I'm looking at season three, episode eight. It's called Schmookon Special. Now, does that does you does it stream directly from your website, or do you have to do it as a download? Uh, every other episode, except for the one you're looking at right now, that's our latest, and I need to get the embed code for that on the site. But um, but yeah, you can usually watch them just on the site there. We uh, have them embedded with uh, VO or, uh, or or maybe even YouTube. Um, so you can watch them on the site, or you can download them in uh, Windows Media Format, in XVID. Um, you can download them in uh, MPEG-4 for your portable devices like your iPod. You can subscribe on iTunes. We've got the RSS feeds for everything else like that. All right, let's take a quick look at one here. I'm going to I'm gonna pump one up here. This time on Hack 5, reverse engineering with Crackmace, unlocking OpenWRT on La Fanera, the only rock band guitar fix you'll ever need, network security with Inprotect, plus IE Express package builder, the rock band drum machine for Windows, save your online flash videos with vConvert, and browsing the internet with your calculator. All right, some interesting topics there. Yeah. I, I, speaking of rock band, I mean, South by Southwest, was, they were crazy about rock band. Everybody there, they had like every other booth at the trade show had a rock band uh, guitar set up and a screen. And then uh, all the uh, panelists were, were getting their own rock bands together and playing, at, playing rock band at the clubs at night. It was just, it went, the whole interactive festival went crazy with rock band. What are these rock band Hacks or mods you've got you're talking about here on season three episode seven. Sure, uh, yeah, on season three episode seven, uh, I think the rock band stuff that we talked about was um, uh, was one of the guys we have on the show. Matt was fixing the rock band guitar for good. So if you're a real rock band connoisseur, you know that uh, some people have said that the rock band guitar is a little smushy and that they've had a lot of production problems with uh, the actual strum bar um, having problems where, especially on the down strum, all of a sudden the down strum just won't work. And it's because the little, uh, little switch that they have in there will just fall out of place and not make contact anymore. So uh, what we did was just took apart the guitar, stripped out all of their crappy switches and replaced them with some hardcore stuff that's never going to break. We also talked about ways that you can uh, mod your drum set so that you're less likely to break it like we did within the first week of getting Rock Band. Um, and on a previous episode, we've even modded the old school uh, 
what is it, Rock Band, or I'm sorry, Guitar Hero 2 controller. So instead of just the five buttons on the fret, but you've got, you would have all ten all the way down it so you can go up and down the board, you know, and, and get that little solo piece that you always love to do. Yeah, I did. So a, yeah, that's that kind of stuff that we do. I did a, uh, a uh, YouTube uh, video. I'm going to play just a, a little bit of it here. It's, uh, it's at the... Uh, at the uh, club courtyard, the courtyard club down on Fourth Street, Cedar Street uh, courtyard, and they spent. They were like the the four hottest geeks in tech. There was Casey McKinnon and uh, Veronica Belmont and Lee Culver and Bonnie Pierzina. They spent about 45 minutes just trying to get Rock Band to work. They could have used you that night, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's a real pain, you know, to get it syncing correctly. We had a one hell of a time with our plasma screen and our receiver getting the uh, the audio and video in sync. But once you've got it going, man, I'm, I'd be at home at, uh, at South by Southwest. It's, it's a shame I couldn't go this year, but um, I'm hoping to next year. Tell us about your uh, your home studio and your video setup and how you produce the shows, like technically, and what you go through, what would be a routine that you would go through to, to make one of your shows, okay? Sure. All right, well, when we started the uh, show in uh, August of 2005, there really wasn't a lot of uh, video podcasts out there. I mean, there was uh, us, Command N, uh, there was, there, I know there was like at least two or three others. Maybe, but um, you know it was really, really early on in this stuff, and uh, there wasn't really a lot of people ask like, "How do you do this?" You know, all I knew was, you know, I knew how to use Sony Vegas, um, the the nonlinear editor on the PC, and I had a camera, and that's all we needed for the the pilot, of course. But then, as we got more and more into it, I'm just like, I'm real geek when it comes to this kind of video stuff. So I was like, "Oh, we got to get three cameras. We got to start switching." So. Uh, for the first you know year and a half, it was all about um, three cameras pointed at us on the set, uh, doing our thing, recording each individual thing to their individual tapes, which then becomes a pain at the end of the day when I have to you know capture three different tapes, and then you know it would be a stack. I mean seriously, I think there's yeah there's a case right here of. Um, <laughs> this is the first season. It's like. Literally, this would be an episode, and it would just be you know the different cameras for, or the the different angles, and it was an absolute pain to do because I'd have to uh, to sync them all up and then make my cuts in post production. So I'd really spend like twenty, thirty hours for every episode just editing, which was you know it started detracting from the fun of actually doing the show. So uh, mid season two, we ended up going to a live to tape solution. Uh, which is something that we picked up just by hanging out at a uh, studio in Canada, G4 Tech TV. And after seeing the pros do it, we were just like, yeah, we got to go live to tape. That's the way to do it. So um, a couple thousand dollars later and uh, a lot of <laughs> S-video cables, and it, and it works. And it's um, So I, don't, I wouldn't say that there's really a typical like um, uh, procedure for any episode other than, you know, we all get together, we drink, we get on set, and we share some technolust, and uh, and our awesome associate producer, Paul, sits behind a huge console of LCDs and mixing boards and uh, and puts together the show so that I don't have to do any of that, that uh, camera switching anymore. Where's your studio? Is it right there in your home, or do you go somewhere to produce the shows? Yeah, well, uh, it started out in uh, my apartment in 2005, and then in uh, late 06, I ended up buying a house because we were just outgrowing everything. So now we all live in a big two-story house with the studio downstairs. It used to be a uh, big dining room, and and now it's we've got uh, you know the fake brick walls on the you know nailed into the walls and whatnot, and we've got like you know all the lights uh, mounted into the ceiling and. Uh, so it's you know it's a mini full blown studio. We've got uh, a mobile broadcast console that's like what you would see in like a news van. Um, so yeah, it's all just like downstairs. It's pretty insane. You know, it's like the real world. We all live together and work on a show together on the internet. So what, what software do you depend on to produce these shows, both for production and for post post production? 
Yeah, so we record to, um, we don't have a, like a hardware-based uh, VTR or videotape recorder, so uh, we'll either record to DV tape through, uh, through a camera that's not being used, or we'll uh, record directly into a PC running Sony Vegas. So, you know, that's where we do our editing, and, uh, you know, it, it, it seems to work. I do um, a little bit of audio and audacity if there's a problem, but mainly it's just Sony Vegas. I mean, we've kind of streamlined the production to the point where I don't have to use a whole lot of complex tools or anything. Then I just encode it all out with virtual dub or Windows Movie Encoder or Media Encoder and whatnot. So yeah. Now, now you, uh, you obviously publish these on your site, which we've been looking at here on the screen, but do you also push it out to, uh, you mentioned VO, in, and uh, do you push it out to VO and YouTube and the other uh, sharing, video sharing services? Yeah, that's the greatest thing about VO is they will actually pick up the uh, the the feed. So we tell them what feed we're going to upload our stuff to. So um, I always upload the the um, MPEG-4 version, the XVID version, and the Windows Media Encoded version, and they will just download from the RSS of our our, our iPod feed for the MPEG-4 and encode that, put it on their site, and uh, they will even then also upload to I think MySpace and Google Video and some other service, and then the YouTube things, a, uh, a manual process. I know there's probably a million better ways to do this, but that's what I do. So VO is, sort, is acting as your aggregator, so they do, a lot, they do a lot of the heavy lifting for you as far as the viral uh, dissemination of your work, right? Yeah, you know, I really wish that uh, other video sharing sites would pick up on that. Uh, you know, they're the only ones that I've seen that has that unique feature where basically they'll just like download automatically the latest episode from our RSS feed. I mean, YouTube should be doing this. Uh, a million other video sharing sites should be doing this. How do you guys? How do you guys brainstorm up your topics for the shows? Well, there's a pretty big cast. You know. Um, it's it's really grown as the years have gone by uh, with guests that start coming on the program, become regular guests, and just become part of the program. So we're all doing our our own things, and we're all interested in you know different areas of tech. So you know uh, I'll be at the office doing some systems administration type stuff, and and uh, find some stuff that oh hey you know this would be worth putting on the show. Whereas my buddy uh, Wes will be just you know uh, working on a mod or whatnot, and uh, say hey you know this is something that I want to put on the show. So we all just have an internal mailing list that we uh, bounce ideas back and forth, and and um, that's how we decide what's going to make it to the show. It's just kind of what we're interested in. Cool. Uh, so you know uh, Amber and Leo. It says here. I'm re I'm reading on your website that uh, that you have a connection with them in the past or something or in the present. Yeah, sure. Um, that that came about back in uh, I think early 2006. I mean because we were one of uh, very few uh, video podcasters, and uh, you know we all just kind of had to stick together. Um, I forget. How it all? Oh, you know, it all came about through TechFile, a uh, audio podcast um, from about the 2005-2006 era, um, done by Franklin Hares, who's now gone on to do uh, Digital Underground TV, and uh, he had me on the show, and he was talking to everybody else, and uh, was doing this big meetup uh, in December of 2005, I think. Yeah, where uh, it was a big meetup in Toronto where G4 Tech TV shoots uh, what was then Call for Help and is now The Lab with Leo. But uh, we got invited to go to, to this party up in um, Toronto with uh, the guys from Lab Rats and uh, Amber from Command N and uh, Leo from Twit. And uh, it, was, it was a blast because we ended up getting to be on uh, Call for Help on uh, G4 Tech TV. And since then, we started making regular trips up there to be on that show all throughout 2006. So that was a lot of fun. That's that's really cool. Okay, so uh, so that that answers my. I just got a great tip from you, and I think I'm going to get on Vo and start using that because I'm I'm trying to solve that problem myself of what to do with all these South by Southwest videos I produce. So uh, that, is that what what would you recommend? What would be your advice for a video blogger just starting out? Well, that was one great tip. Do you have any others? 
Oh, sure. Um, you know, if you could get yourself an intern, that would be awesome because it is so much work. You, I had no idea when I first got into this how much money or how much time it would take to, to keep up with the show. And I feel like uh, even with everything that I do, I, I still – there's so much more I could be doing uh, as far as promoting the show and, and getting it out on so many different services. Uh, so yeah, definitely take advantage of VO because they will automatically download it from your RSS and, and, and shoot it out to a few other services. Uh, but the rest of it, um, I mean, it's just going to take a lot of time. So, so what, do you, what do you think about this uh, Leo Laporte going to... Uh streaming from his uh, mansion in Petaluma there. What do you think about that idea? Oh, I'm enthusiastic about it. That that seems really cool. I'm sure he'll have a lot of fun with it. I have no clue other than what I've heard on Twitter. I haven't talked to him in, in a while, so, you know, we'll see. Um, from what he says on Twitter, it sounds interesting. The uh, It's actually something that we've been doing for a little while here um, uh, with Hack5 Live, so, you know, it's it's always it's a it's a much different thing when you're doing live. It's really fun because because um, anything you, you mess up, it's in it, right? And uh, the same thing with live to tape, really. But um, but yeah, it kind of keeps you on your toes. So I'm looking forward to watching it, and uh, yeah, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of fun with it. Where do we watch uh, Hack Five Live? How do we tune into that? Uh, sure. Every now and then we'll do a live show. It doesn't really have a set schedule like the main show does. Uh, so we'll put up an announcement on hack5.org and then we'll give you a date and time and you just show up to hack5.org and you'll see a big embedded uh, flash player and a big chat room uh, flash widget thing on the sidebar. And uh, much like you have on justin.tv or something like that, you can just tune in. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a ton of fun to do these because you know you never know what you're going to get when you start doing one of these live shows. Now you said you're uh, using uh, using uh, Vegas Video, so that kind of gives me a clue that you're you're kind of a Windows shop there. Uh, what what do you have against the Mac and uh, Leopard? And <laughs> Come on, no, nah, dude, it's a mixed bag, really. I mean, you know, I'm on a PC for work and stuff, but I'm also dual booting with Linux. I got an EPC running Backtrack three uh, and uh, Ubuntu, and then I've got uh, then we've got. Paul, right across the wall over here, uh, one of my roommates, uh, the associate producer on the show, he runs uh, G4 um, iMac. No, it's a, a Mac Mini. He rocks his Mac Mini, and I think he's got the old Thai book, the Titanium Mac. Remember that guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Wes rocks a, uh, a MacBook Pro, and I believe – I think Matt has a MacBook as well. I don't – so, no, there's nothing against Mac, Linux, or anything here. No. You're, you're like the only thing we – you're agnostic like me, right? <laughs> yeah, I really. You know, as long as it's not the C64 or Amiga, you know, I'm <laughs> play. Let's go. Where Where are you guys geographically on the planet there? Uh, sure, we're in Virginia, actually. We're uh, in a little town called Williamsburg. We're one of the original 13 colonies, so it's uh, colonial. It's it's really pleasant. It's, uh, it's pretty quiet around here. We're um, just, you know, 40 minutes from the capital, and... Uh, I don't know. It's nice on the East Coast. The weather's really calm. So uh, I guess that about wraps it up. Unless you, you want to uh, just kind of random associate it and tell me what's on, what you're thinking about right now. What's running through your mind? What have you got? Uh, what's what's <laughs> in that head of yours about what you've got to do next and what's going on in the, your world right now? The off season. I cannot wait. It's uh, when we started this, we're like, okay, when are we going to stop? Because it's it was a you know, twenty four hour production almost to begin with. I mean, it took us two months to do the first episode, and then from there on, said we'd do one every month afterwards. Um, so it's we do uh, ten months on, two months off, and I've got two more episodes to get out of here, and then I am free. But not really, because that actually just means that I'm going to be spending the entire off season doing R and D for the next season, making it every more beautiful. And we're also working on a uh, live show uh, that's going to come out hopefully soon. That's uh, going to involve live contestants over the internet. So that should be a lot of fun. What, what do you when you say season? When do, what is your season? Um. Yeah. Sure. It's uh, August fifth through May fifth. Okay, and that's when you produce your show. Right, yeah, and then we take off um, the rest of the month of May and June and then uh, get back into production on July for the August 5th episode. Cool, okay. Well, we're, we'll definitely uh, 
I can think of a thousand more questions to ask you, and, and what you guys are doing is incredible. I've watched a little bit of your shows. I'm going to be watching a lot more because I got some really useful tips off of watching the couple that I did, and uh, these are great little hacks and uh, and uh, hardware tips and software tips and uh, things that uh, some of the things that you need to know that you don't need to know, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, no, cause nobody nobody taught you this when you first got into, especially for us. I mean, we really had to pave the way and kind of like stumble around, uh, you know, falling flat sometimes, figuring this stuff out. And um, so if you have any other production questions, you know, by all means, shoot me an email or find me on Twitter or, or just hit me up on Skype because, uh, you know, or join our IRC, you know, uh, irc.hack5.org, pound hack5. Yeah, so uh, a great group of people in there, and we'll always uh, answer your questions. And uh, so, yeah, you know, because I know that you just recently started this stuff, and you have no idea what you're getting into. So, definitely <laughs> give me a ring if you if you get stuck. Oh, one more quick question: What's the headset you're using right now? It sounds great. Is that a Logitech? Yeah, it's just a cheap Logitech USB headset. So nothing fancy. I don't do any. I don't really do any audio podcast stuff. So I've never really invested in anything more than just a cheap USB headset. So hack5.org. What else, What other what other what other destinations do you have? Uh, for me, you can head over to darrenkitchen.com. Other than that, um, we'll see in uh, in May. Okay, May. We're looking forward to it. Hey, Darren. Right. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. You okay. take care, man. All right. Bye bye. That's uh, the Thursday, March twentieth edition of Austin Cast. We've been talking to Darren Kitchen. And uh, great guy, great, uh, great thing. Now I got to shut this thing off. Control, shift, control, two.